Hey, what's up everybody? This is Levi here back with another YouTube video. In this video, I'm doing kind of an overview of this software I found recently, Open Broadcaster Software. It's an open source live streaming and screen recording software. It's available for free. There's a link in the description. This is nearly as good as the premium version of XSplit and it's completely free. And keep in mind the software is still in its alpha stages. Unfortunately, it's only available for Windows Vista and Windows 7, but it does support 64-bit so a 64-bit guys aren't left out. Now I'm going to get into the settings and show you what's available in the software. First of all, you can choose and create profiles and have different languages for those. In the encoding options, you can set a quality to performance ratio, basically. And there's maximum bit rate and buffer size you can set. There's two audio codecs, MP3 and AAC, and a variety of bit rates for those. In your broadcast settings, you can save it to your hard drive or you can do a live stream. You can also save to your hard drive and live stream at the same time with the save to file feature. You can put a delay on your live stream if you'd like. Uh, they've got support for uh, the major live streamers here and custom ones too. And you can auto reconnect if you get disconnected. There's also hotkeys for starting and stopping the stream, which they support mouse keys too. In video, you can set a custom resolution or select one of the monitors and have it assigned automatically. You can also downscale that resolution and change a frame rate from 10 to 60. And if you go into advanced and select the 61 to 120, you can have up to 120 FPS. You can also select to disable arrow on startup. In the audio, you can do things like selecting your audio device. You can use push to talk if you'd like. You can assign keybinds to mute mic and mute desktop audio. You can also force your mic to be in mono only or boost the output of your mic. You can use multi-threaded optimizations. You can also set this software to high priority for its CPU use. And there's things like constant bit rate. Here's the option for 120 FPS. You can also use higher quality audio and you can use this which is supposed to increase the network performance but it causes some delay in the live stream. There's things here like audio monitoring. You can also adjust the levels or mute the audio of the desktop or the mic. Adding pictures to live stream, select add scene. And once you have a scene, you can add an input. Software capture, you can capture either from an application or you can capture a screen region with that. You can add an image or an image slideshow. Both of those support opacity. There's global sources. A global source is any of these other six, but one that you've pre-configured already. You can add text or you can add a video capture card or a webcam and then there's game capture which captures directly from the game like from the DirectX output or something like that. You can also adjust the positioning of these. If I were to enable the live view we can see the live view and if I edit sources this red box appears and now I can reposition this output. I could also drag interface that I've created around above the picture and edit things like its opacity. There isn't options to change the color to those things, the brightness and contrast or any of that, but you can have multiple layers of things and it works pretty much just like XSplit. Well, thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you get some good use out of this software like I know I am. Until the next video, peace out.